How do you determine the service life of concrete? My name's Tyler Lay, and I'm cuckoo for concrete. It's pretty common to compare things in terms of their life cycle cost analysis. This is done on cars, on cell phones, on computers, all kinds of things. What does life cycle cost analysis mean? Well, really simply, it's the cost over the life, or mathematically, the cost divided by the life. If something doesn't cost much and it lasts a very long time, then it has an amazing life cycle cost analysis. Now, in the world of cost, that's determined by the money people, right? The business folks, the accountants, they look at time value of money stuff. But the engineers, the concrete people, we're more interested in the life, determining the life of concrete. How do you determine how long something will last? Do you know how long you're gonna last? I have no idea how long I'm gonna last. But if we can find out how something's gonna die, then we've got a better chance of figuring out how long it's gonna live. Our current models that I'm gonna talk about and that are used in practice only predict failure from corrosion. That does not mean that all structures fail from corrosion. That doesn't mean that at all. It just means we can't predict other failure mechanisms. And some will say that we can't predict corrosion failure very well either. How this works is if you have a concrete surface and there's outside salt solutions that come onto it, then over time they're gonna penetrate and they're gonna go in deeper, and then they're gonna go in deeper, and then eventually get to the surface of the rebar and start to cause corrosion. And that's what these models are all about. All the models require some kind of weather information, some kind of chloride loading, some kind of steel properties and concrete properties. Now I'm gonna to link to several of the models in the notes. And I'm not gonna talk about any one specific model, I'm gonna talk about it in general terms. As far as weather goes, that's pretty straightforward. How hot it is, how much it rains, information like that. Relative humidity is important. Chloride loading is how much of the outside chemicals actually come onto the concrete. That's dependent on where you're at, how often they put the de-icers down, or how much the ocean or the ocean spray gets onto the concrete structure. For the steel properties and concrete properties, we're gonna talk about those in detail. For the steel, one thing that's critical to know is the amount of chlorides at the steel when corrosion begins. This is called the chloride threshold level and is actually different for different types of steel. There's another term. It's the time needed before the corrosion product starts to form. This is called the initiation period. This again can be different for different types of steel. Let me tell you a secret though. These two parameters, chloride threshold and initiation period, they're not well understood and they're variable. It's like kind of make, trying to make a hit YouTube channel. Not everybody gets it, but sometimes you get lucky and it's great. And these things are kind of similar. They happen, we can sometimes get them right, but sometimes we don't. The concrete properties, we want to know how fast the chlorides are going to enter. And the simplest models of all just use something called the effective diffusion coefficient. That's it, the effective diffusion coefficient. The more complicated models take into account the porosity and the sorption of the concrete. The complicated models also are very iterative. They measure changes in concrete or predict changes in concrete changes in the ions in solution, the rate of penetration, and the saturation level of the concrete. The complicated models, they predict how the concrete's gonna change. They predict all the ions swimming around in solution and how that affects the outside chemicals penetration, the rate at which they come in, and the saturation level of the concrete. The challenges with every model out there is they ignore cracks. Ha, they ignore them. They only look at corrosion. They needed lots more validation and there's tons of stuff that we don't understand or know. 
So what do we really need? We need a much more fundal, uh, fundamental understanding of what's going on. We need better methods to measure what's happening. We need to understand what is the impact of our construction practices on all these parameters. We need to know the variability in an actual structure. And we need tons more field validation. But one way we can handle all of this is we can add uncertainty to our models. So when we have a parameter, like the diffusion coefficient, we might say, oh, it could vary between plus or minus hmm, 20%. And then we could work the model with all kinds of different solutions, as in pick it at 5%, and then 7%, and then 8%, and then 9%, and then over and over and over and over again, and to do that randomly to see what comes up and not do it with just one variable, do it with all the variables. And this is called a Monte Carlo analysis. It's kind of like gambling. You just keep rolling that dice and see what comes up. You're just seeing what the variability is and how it impacts your results. In summary, predicting the lifetime of concrete is really hard. And logical procedures do exist. That's the good news. But big time improvements are needed. That's maybe the bad news. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Please give me a thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe to my channel and tell me what you're working on as far as serviceability or service life prediction goes. Tell me what you really think we need to see in the future. Take care, everybody. Bye.